Welcome back guys. As many of you guys know, if you've been following the channel, coming into this spring selling season, we had an immense amount of inventory hit the market. Single family homes, condos, even more so for condos down here in Southwest Florida. You guys kind of know the reasoning for that. Today I wanna to take a, basically a boots on the ground look, look at a few properties that have sold, take a look at some of the numbers from uh, my area, see how things have shifted now that we're technically out of season. Have we sold off all this inventory? Is there still too much on the market? Is there still too many people listing? Are prices declining? Are they going up? We're gonna to try to cover all of that here today. But before we do guys, if you haven't already, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you like the channel, really helps me out immensely. Maybe like the video and we'll jump right in. Okay, so I'll try to keep it kind of casual today. Not too numbers heavy, but I am gonna dive in. Wanted to start off with this house in Port Charlotte, Florida. This is a three bedroom, two bath. You can see here, 1300 square feet. Looks like it was built in the 78, built in 78. Just sold for 250,000. And you may say, well, what's this is kind of our starter home price point now. Um, these were unobtainable around here for under three. Nice to see one at 250. But look at why this is interesting. So if we drop down to the property overview, you can see this was actually a multiple offer situation. Just shooting through the photos here. Guys, this house had a bidding war on it. So you can see it's gonna need some updating. Uh, I mean, the kitchen's probably gotta go. The carpet's probably gotta go. But at 250, this size house, I uh, got a little stain on the ceiling there. Uh, there's some work to be done here. I don't really need to go any farther. You can see that. Man, we got all the classics here. We got green carpet, yellow bathroom. But here is the kicker, guys. Are you ready for this once we get through all these photos? It's got a pool. It may not have a cage, but it's got an in-ground pool. 250 in-ground pool. This is obviously a fixer-upper, but what a killer price. No wonder it got multiple offers. But the really interesting thing here is it got multiple offers and still closed under its asking price. They were asking 265, even with multiple offers, they were only able to achieve 250,000. Now there could be many reasons for that. Uh, could be none of the multiple offers were anywhere near asking price, which I kind of told you is the trend down here right now, but they could have went under contract for asking price and then the inspections unveiled a host of problems and they were you know, renegotiated the deal at that point. But it is interesting to see this house with multiple offers bidding war still went under asking price at $189 a square foot. And I know what the next question is gonna be guys, that was actually not a cash deal. That was a conventional loan. So immediately you would have assumed, oh, a cash investor came in and bought this up right away. Not really, it was on the market for only three days, but it was financing that won the bid. It wasn't cash. Now I've got more properties like that I'm gonna show you guys, and I'm gonna kinda of go through the data after each one. This is Port Charlotte's single family housing stats for May of 2024, just got this in. This is all sourced from the MLS through Coldwell Banker's website. As you can see, average sales price, $373,000, slightly up from last May, up 3%, but down from the previous three months and down almost 3% for April. Median sales price sitting at $325,000, down 3% for April, only down 1.5% from last year, down 4% from the trailing couple of months there. We sold 255 properties, a slight increase from last year, average days on market now up to 96 in Port Charlotte. And I'll be taking you guys through Inglewood in a couple areas as well. So, you know, before we're like, oh, let's see all Charlotte County. The month supply of inventory just in Port Charlotte sitting at 6.35. So that is kind of balanced more into a buyer's favor. That's a 57% increase in the months of supply from the previous year and new listings coming to market up almost 40%. Now we can go through all this stuff. You can see average days on market as it increased. It got really crazy in January. It's leveled out a little bit, but this is our season. Average price per square foot. This is what people want to know in Port Charlotte. In May of 2022, it was $242 a square foot, peaked at 246, we are down at $221 a square foot. So we clearly have in Port Charlotte for single family homes, a very visible price decline, though it is kind of all over the place. Could it spike back up like it did in last July? It actually spiked back up, we'll see what happens. The next property we're gonna drop you into guys here, this is a double lot pool house in Inglewood, Florida. Three beds, two baths, 2,200 square feet, just sold for 405,000. The exterior looks pretty good. I think that's a pretty decent price. You're talking $181 a square foot. Historically, pool houses down here, 240, 260, 181. So let's see if maybe something on the interior is causing this because exterior wise, looks like a pretty clean house and you get two lots as well. And some waterfront, that is not bad. You get a little shed over here. Uh, this seems to me, 
like this was a very aggressively priced house. Yeah, you're gonna need some flooring updates, but kitchen updates, but still 181 a square foot. These things used to go for top dollar, so it's interesting to see that kind of shift in the price per square foot. Could you live in this right now? 100%. Are some people gonna to wanna to make updates? Sure. I'm not crazy about how this tile floor looks with, it looks like laminate, but it's, it's tile? Maybe it's smart core. Um, smart core sneaky guys. They'll throw that stuff right over tile down here. So if you hear smart core flooring, make sure it's not on top of tile because that happens sometimes. Got a nice size pool area. I mean, this seems very reasonably priced to me, especially since you're getting a shed. You can see this place has obviously been taken care of. You got your waterfront there. Let's see what it was listed for. How long did it last? So according to the MLS guys, this house was on the market for two days, not surprisingly. Also got into a bidding war and went over ask at 405. So that is an interesting, I mean, that's extremely low to list a 177 a square foot for a property that even if it's a drainage ditch has any water view or access, never mind a double lot and a pool. That seems pretty good. I mean, unless I'm missing something here, this seems like it was a great deal. And obviously people felt that way. So you can still see now, uh, we're almost going in the other direction. I'm showing you, <laughs> I used to show you massive price decreases. Now I'm showing you people going over and making multiple offers on places, but the prices have adjusted to reflect that if you've got such a good deal like this, it's gonna fly off the shelf. That's what I've been telling people. We're still selling a lot of houses here in Charlotte County. We sold 508 in May in the county. That is the highest we've sold since the spring of 2022, crushing the previous two months, which were high fours. So a lot of buying velocity going on here. People are deciding what floor they're comfortable with. And I mean, it may not be 2019 prices, but that's a pretty good deal right now. So now we're gonna check the stats for Inglewood. Average, I love this, average list price, $842,000. Average sales price, 585. Guys, that's a big miss. That's a big miss. And that average sales price is down 14% from last May. The median sales price is only 462,000. That's actually up 7% from last May. So it's taken about 79 days to get a contract in Inglewood. Uh, when that is the median sales price, you can see why that pool home at 397, even with some upgrades, upgrades needed, flew off the shelf there. Makes sense. Their month supply of inventory down uh, pretty considerably, 5.66 at some, at one point Inglewood was up to eight months. So that's still 139% increase from the previous year on their months of supply, their new listings, stable. Exactly, that's, that's crazy. Listing the same exact amount of houses they did last year, actually less than the three month average. So that is what is causing that months of supply to go down. Let's take a look at the median and average sales price in the area. I don't know, can you guys make sense of this? It's just, <laughs> it's just squiggly lines the whole way through. It's all over the place. This is why average is so, this is a great example of why average is, is not that great to use. And we use median, you can see the median price is pretty stable. We hit a peak here again in 2022 in Englewood. It's kind of stabilized. It fluctuates a little bit for, for the most part. This is a fairly straight line. Whereas someone may come to tell you, uh, Oh, September, 2023, we hit an all time high for, for sales, average sales price in Inglewood. And they'd be right. Cause it's 717 right there. You can see this is past any of the highs that we've had the very next month, the average sales price was 546,000. So you cannot go by that. You really got to dive into the long-term trends. With that being said, average price per square foot all over the place as well. I prefer to have median price per square foot, but they don't give me that on this. Jumping over to Northport, we're gonna start in Warm Mineral Springs. Just wanna do a contrast of how different five to six miles uh, the pricing can be down here. It's, it's kind of crazy because this house sold for $277,000 in Warm Mineral Springs in Northport. It's 1,080 square feet, two beds, two baths, built in 1979. So it's, Got a new roof, it looks like. I mean, but that's not even a selling feature down here anymore, guys. Everybody's got a new roof after Hurricane Ian. Uh, one car garage, let's see. Okay, AC looks like it's okay. You got a little waterfront here. You got a little water, throw, throw a kayak in there. Um, hang out with some gators. Looks like they got a closed off lanai. Oh, who took these straight up cell phone? These are cell phone photos from not even horizontal. Ah, that's frustrating. Wow, that's frustrating. I can't gleam too much out of this house, but 277, 1,000 square feet, Northport, Florida. All right, you get a little water there. Let's go just six, seven miles south into Port Charlotte, 33952. 
brand new house from Lennar, $299. $299, yeah, you're not gonna get a water view. Three beds, two baths, 1,551 square feet on a quarter acre lot. $299,999, guys, not even $300,000. So what a stark contrast from Northport down just to the Port Charlotte area in this pricing. Let's see what we get. Lennar is, you know, you get what you get with Lennar. They put what they put in their house. There's no customization, but you're getting tile, some carpet in the bedrooms, perfectly, no mirror. Okay, perfectly serviceable bathroom. It looks pretty good. I mean, for $3.99, guys, I've walked through one of these. I, I don't know if I put one of them in the video, uh, but I have done walkthroughs in these. I mean, for 300 grand. So Port Charlotte, $2.99, brand new. Brand new Lennar house or Northport. 277, 50 year old house. The, guys, the insurance, the insurance alone, I mean, doesn't make sense to me. But, you know, especially when you're only 23,000 apart. But it dep I know people have to live in certain places, they want certain areas. But most of the people who come down here to buy will generally look from Venice to Punta Gorda, maybe even further. Some people do south of Sarasota, Nokomis, Osprey. They cover a large area of the southwest coast because pretty much no matter where you are here, you're going to be near the beach, and that's what most people want, and the weather's still hot. So let's hit Northport stats for May of 2024. Average sales price, 371. Median sales price, 350. Both down, uh, and I've been telling you guys this about Northport. Northport is really seeing, seeing price declines and, and things that other areas aren't seeing as drastic, but this is, this is what's happening. It's showing us in the data here. Northport median sales price down 5% year over year, flat all season, surprisingly. Taking about 78 days to sell your house in Northport, not too bad. 921 properties in Northport for sale. That's up 60% from the previous year, but only 5.12 months of inventory. That's, that's getting dangerously close, guys, to being back in a seller's market. And this is how quickly this can change. So the question, I mean, even with that being said, that's up 90%. So is that trend gonna continue? We see this every season. We do see inventory come down. We cleared out a lot of inventory that I've, I'm very surprised that in each of these areas, this is not up in the sevens, the eights, the nines anymore. We're gonna also take a look at Punta Gorda, but it's been chewed through pretty drastically. And that's because people are making aggressive offers. They're feeling that this isn't the top anymore. So they're, they're moving on in. Now, Northport did list 20% more listings than they did the previous year, but that's still keeping the months of supply around 5.12. That's not a drastically high number. And this may be some of the reason Northport's average price per square foot two years ago was 241. As you guys can see now, it's 227. Peaked out again in that June 2022 timeframe at about 250. And we can see the slope here. The, the decline has come down. It looks like it's kind of stabilized, but it does this this time of year. So we're gonna have to see where it goes for the remainder of the year. Is there gonna be stronger price declines? Is this just gonna be stable from here on out? We'll have to watch it. And we'll pop into this house in Punta Gorda really quick. Three beds, two baths, 1489, 300,000. Now this is where those new constructions are putting pressure on these houses. This was built in 1988. Yeah, it's got a new roof, but like I said, so does everybody else. So how do you compete at this price point, when this is basically the same size house, let's go back over to Stanley. This is the exact same size house. It, this one's actually bigger. The brand new Lennar build is actually bigger and newer at 300. And then we have this one in Punta Gorda, which is older at 300. What does it look like inside? All right, you got some carpet, not terrible. You know what, I will say this guys, if you go into a house with a carpet and it's white and it's this clean, house is probably in pretty good shape. Also, if you walk up to a house and you ring the doorbell and it doesn't work, don't buy that house because if they don't fix the doorbell, you don't even want to know what's under the hood. All right, kitchen's not bad. So this has some cool little updates in it. Uh, the flooring's been updated. People love the laminate. I'm not crazy about it myself. Um, I'm real. I'm, a, I'm weird though. I'm a carpet guy. I like carpet in my bedroom, which I get a lot of crap for, but I just like to, when you land in the morning, a little, a little cushion, a little fluff. Uh, bathrooms have been updated. Okay, so here, this is... This is justifiable to me. This is a updated older home with some nice things about it that can compete with new construction. Uh, so you'll see things like this, but you, 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 these houses, I mean, for 300 grand, you used to, it used to be like the one in Northport, nothing done and you get basically bare bones and you gotta do everything yourself. So it's nice to see the new construction. This is that pressure that's being put on these that, hey, 
this isn't going to fly. They probably would have listed this house, I'd say, for like 375 two years ago. What did they come on the market as as of this time? Um, they came on at 340. So 340, 228 a square foot. That was easily obtainable in Punta Gorda for a house without a pool. Now looks like times are changing. Plus we have all the new construction coming in. That's what's really doing it, I think. So they had to take it down to 201 a square foot. Now going to 33950 Punta Gorda Isles, I have used this so many times, guys, on this channel because the inventory was just insane. 10, 11 months. I'm gonna skip all the other stuff real quick. 5.29 months of inventory right now in 33950. It's been, the year to date average was nine months. That's how much property has been sold here in the past two to three months. It's, it's mind blowing. It's dragging down the supply drastically. It's st supply is still up 53% from last year and could spike here later on in the year. But to see this go from an average of nine months of inventory to five months of inventory is mind blowing to me. The average price per square foot in 33950 Punta Gorda, $332 a square foot. Average days on market, 102. Now this is still down. Now I'm gonna take a look at this price per square foot. Actually down 8% from last year because that's, that's low from what I thought it would be. Your average days on market at 102 is up 131 Median sales price, I'm sorry, average sales price, 724,000 down 1.62. Median sales price getting absolutely crushed for single family homes down 20% year over year. 20% guys, I haven't seen a number like that other than the condo market. That is the, man. So, okay, we sold a lot more houses. We're taking a lot of inventory off the market. High velocity sales, but wow. Now, as you can see, number of properties sold, 62. That's up 16% from last year, up 20% from last year. The sales are up, but the median price is down 20%. That's, that's large. That's very big. Um, I, I wish I had a gargantuan. I don't know. I have a better word to express. That's very, those are big numbers. <laughs> that's why you guys, that's why you guys come to me. 328 properties for sale in this zip code. Interesting. Let's take a look at that average sales price per square foot. Now, before I jump the gun, average and median sales price all over the place for this zip code. Look at this. So uh, this really low median sales price could skyrocket next month. But when you look at it year over year, that's a big drop year over year. But I guess really here, it depends on what sells and what type, what type of month it is, because this is all over the place. And is there, a, is there a line you can narrow out somewhere through here? Maybe, but that's crazy. Uh, list the sales price ratio, just for fun guys, used to be over 100, obviously not, not, that's not happening. 94% right now in uh, the PGI area. Oof, days on market, you could see going up quite a bit. But here we are, average price per square foot. I mean, if you take out all this variation, is this just a straight line over the past two years? It doesn't look like it's a declining line. Median, I would love to see because that would be, uh, I think, a better indicator, but I don't have it here. All right, guys, if you like this video, give me a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.